Hi, welcome everyone to the February board meeting of the Shrewsbury Housing Authority. Uh, you know that this meeting doesn't always happen here at Francis. We traditionally have it at the tower, move around. We come here a couple times a year if we're able to. So I'd like to thank you all for letting us come here tonight. And it's, um, at least for me, and I'm sure I speak for the rest of the board, a thrill to get out and see uh, different populations of residents and have the meeting here. It isn't the most efficient layout, but we'll do our best and we'll take questions at the end and things like that. So um, thank you for all of us. And with that, I'd like to open and call to order the February board meeting of the Shrewsbury Housing Authority. With that, I would like to take a motion regarding the minutes of the previous January meeting. I'll make a motion. Oh, second. Sorry. Yeah. second. Mo motions are made and accepted regarding uh, the Jan accepting the January meetings. All in favor? Aye. Uh, universally accepted, Kelly. Uh, next, we'll move on to the treasurer and the financial report. Balances look very healthy, Kelly. Yes, they are. Especially the antenna accounts look great. Um, we do not need a motion to accept that report, but that brings us right into the payables, the, the check roll. So uh, with that, before I take a motion, I'll pause and see if any of my fellow commissioners have questions regarding the, uh, the check roll totaling 110 or 120. I do. Go ahead, Mr. Ricker. Um, come with the mass of the employee health. Uh, can't hear you. The health insurance and life insurance and disability insurance payment. Is that a yearly payment or is that, a, is that biannual? It's yearly. Okay. All right. And the employees also uh, contribute to that, right? Correct. Right. And what number is that, Richard? That is uh, 18899. 35 and change? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. Um, I also had a question on the water bills. Um, they seem pretty high. The one particularly for Lake Street of $2,200. Is that a quarterly bill? What number are you on? I'm sorry. Um, 18943. 18943. No, that's normal. Wow. For Lake Street. Wow. And South Street is 1297 a quarter? Well, the Lake Street, is that all three buildings there or just one of them? On Lake? On Lake. It's the three. Oh. So, Richard, that's technically uh, but I know. 700 each. I know. All right. All right. I know, but, I mean, when you compare that to your average household bill, it's extremely high. And South, Street is, South Street is, too. You know, where is South Street? Oh, right above it. I yeah. see. That's high. Well, I think they're both high. I think someone should check that. And... With with that in mind, um, did we are we paying those bills on time, or are there late fees involved in these? No, they're on time. Okay, because I had uh, I I received a call from the water department about uh, the billing cycles and what whether our payment of the bills was timely based on their billing cycles. It was more in the line of a complaint than a <laughs> comment. <laughs> Make sure that they keep your number yeah. in their Rolodex. That's fine. Well, you know, I do a lot of business in the town, so yeah. I guess I'm accessible. Exactly. Yeah. And those are the questions I have. Okay. So, Kelly, maybe the thing to do is, um, well, I, I would assume you're not opposed to paying the bills as they are, Richard. No, I'm not. But maybe doing an to inquiry check to check yeah. up, um, and check with meters, the, updates, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And check on the timeliness of, of the payments okay. as well as, okay? I will. The only other thing that I would say is the uh, water heaters bill, 18903. That was the one question I had. Is, is yeah. that uh, buying a bunch of water heaters, is that, or is that one in particular carrier? the name, we have to be careful to. Yeah, there's two yes. no relationship, I assume. For this, for this property? Yeah. Because she's not from Rocky. And you probably have it in your explanation, which is the next thing on the list here. And let's see. Yes, you do. Oh, Two hot water same. heaters, uh, Francis Gardens. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. thank you. I had that same question. Right. Can everyone in the back hear us okay? No. Yeah. Really. Yeah, mixed, so. Okay. I, generally, I've never been accused of people not being able to hear me, but I will encourage everyone to my left and right to speak up. I do have a microphone. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. 
Um, okay, I had the same question that you asked, Richard, so that was me. Um, that was my question. Okay. I'm good. Yep. Uh, Ms. McSweeney? No, I'm good. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the payables then in the amount of $120,013.91. Hey, Second. Is this on? Can you hear him? Push the button up. How's that? How's that? No, it's up. How's that? There you go. All right. All right. All right. So I'll make a motion that we approve the payables as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Kelly unanimous. All right, we have Gary Kelly's uh, notes. Uh, those are self-explanatory for the most part, though he is uh, graciously joined to be here when we get into the second half of this meeting. Feedback, maybe? <laughs> I think they, took, they took it away from you. <laughs> well, I think it's proximity to these mics. It's probably the issue. Um, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, Section 8 voucher. Uh, I will take a motion for the 118. Oh, I'll make a motion that we uh, pay the uh, landlords and tenants in the amount of 118,280. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved, Kelly, unanimously. And I'll make a motion. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me back there? Okay. And I'll make a motion that we uh, pay the uh, portability check register in the amount of 1291 Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. And I'll Kelly. make a motion that we pay the payroll as, as printed. printed. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Kelly, the NARO. I, I mentioned to you prior to the meeting, so I, I don't get uh, accused of you had highlighted a passage that was specifically referred to, and I will never find it now, when I read it about the tenant, um, well, here it is, I did find it, uh, and it referenced being appointed by um, the selectmen of a particular town. And I know we were ahead of the curve when we did an election, okay. but my understanding, which I hope you're going to tell me is accurate, is that um, we are in compliance with the current Mandates. We are. Okay. Right, Thank because you. as we discussed at the last meeting, we were ahead of there the are several different right. ways that they've been discussing the appointment of a resident commissioner. Mm -hmm. Right. Where is our resident commissioner? He's sick he tonight. He's oh. a, yeah, I should say for the record, our resident commissioner is uh, ill tonight. Thank you. Um, so this is just another example of how uh, some boards and or some towns are handling this. So right. I, I think this is the highlighted passage. It's on page the not marked, but the one with the a narrow icon, February nineteen, page four. The tenant member will be appointed, not elected by the board of selectmen, listed from the local tenants with the long-standing process in the city, and uh, that seemed to be um, opposite to our process. But I know, to Mr. Ricker's point, there was a couple of processes laid out um, in the mandate. It's highlighted from her, so you just scrolled with the highlighted. I'm looking for it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if anyone to my left or my right has any further discussion on that, or Kathy, Kathy does. I yeah, go ahead. I, do I need the mic? Yes. Be careful. <laughs> Hello. Um, my question on this, when I read it, and Kelly, maybe you can clarify. No, it sounds like we're currently we're required to have a federal, but not a state. When the bill, <laughs> when this bill passes, which it did not pass this last time, so it's right. a fact, is federal and state will be able to apply, as you say, or run for the tenant commissioner for the same seat. To be right. clear, one, one seat, one, one seat, seat, be it a federal or a state rep. Yeah, I th my sense is yeah. there might have been some confusion there because yeah. I know I had some. So it would have to be, and I might be reading between the lines, Mr. Ricker, it would have to be popular election across the entire enterprise of the housing authority, federal and state, and quite simply, a common vote, popular vote wins. So if it's a federal representative with 30 votes and a state with 35, the resident commissioner becomes the state. I, I'm extrapolating there, but it's the only way it makes sense to me otherwise. Yes. Okay. You're right. right. Yes. So there there's a little lot. There's a yeah. little camp and all the logic there. I didn't read that. I'm no, just I saying. know. But so <laughs> what confused me about it, I just wanted to get clarification. It it sounds like, unless I misread it, that somewhere I read that the board of selectmen would appoint it. 
That's but down that, further. The, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. but that's usually how it's done in a city, but not in a town. But if this becomes law, then would it be appointed? I know I had. No, I think I think what okay, we're, I, I think what we're finding is that is that different versions of this have been Page turned force, down number. by the legislature, okay. and what we're getting is revisions of those of of various bills that have been filed. So there is no okay. final result, and I think th what this is telling us is that um, some legislators have favored a board of selectmen or a, or a city council appointing the person from the ranks of both the state or the federal facilities, or in, uh, and there's other legislators that want a popular election uh, whereby a tenant would be, a resident would be, of, of one of the uh, properties would be on a ballot. Okay. Uh, in fact, a townwide ballot. Um, but that, but that would be restricted only to those living in the living enterprise. in in the facilities. Right. So, and and another way is for the residents themselves to elect amongst themselves a resident commissioner. So That's my favorite way because I think that 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 gives you more it's the most say and, and it's the it's most, the most democratic, democratic amongst yourselves. Right. Um, but that, of course, um, also can disfavor, um, you know, people, for instance, from Elizabeth Gardens, who, who don't, you know, have as many friends and, and um, acquaintances as folks here, where there's or 100 units, or at the towers with there's Family units, units as well. That's and why I say enterprise-wide. It's the entire yeah. entity of SHA that would be eligible mm -hmm. under that model. Right. And if I recall, and, and contemporaries correct me if I'm wrong, and it might just be you, it was two or three years ago when this first came down, the initial interpretation and the initial legislation was the housing authority was going to submit names, three, I believe, to the selectmen, and then they were going to appoint one of those three. And we did that process, and then only, I think you only, go, have, only you have the selectmen say, we don't have... <laughs> it was it was it was kicked we, back. We don't have because the selectmen said we don't have a legal mandate to do this. Okay. We don't want to overstep. Right. Essentially, even though they were the ones that requested the right. um, through their town manager through our town manager, they, they requested us to take that process forward, right. Right. So, and then they rejected right. it because they determined in the meantime that they couldn't do it. It wasn't legislated to be really right. fair. So, so the so bottom the line is, yeah, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Until further notice, it is Bruce, who right. happens to not be here for this discussion concerning his seat, ironically. <laughs> okay. um, beyond that, Kelly, you had highlighted a few other areas. Anything you'd like to um, comment on from the correspondence, Kelly? Um, legislative day is March 7th. If I am going, but if anybody from the board would like to go, just let me know. Um, I have a form to fill out. March 7th. Correct? Yes. Boston? You can Boston. go? Boston. Okay, yeah. Um, I would tell you to encourage you to, um, and I'm happy to do so on your behalf if you want, to reach out to our state rep, who I'm sure will be there and be glad to see you. She usually is. Yeah, yeah so, she is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right, anything else from correspondence, Kelly? There's a lot that I highlighted. You did highlight quite a bit. The one that scared me was the tenancy. So, so HUD was shut down for... 21 days. Um, how, did that, how did that affect us? Not at all. Okay. The only time I couldn't call HUD was our little incident at the towers. Okay. The little incident being a flooding. A flood. I'll speak to that once <laughs> yeah. it's new business. I'll at least open that up. So. Um, CHAMP, which is the statewide waiting list, has been a headache. It does not affect the residents, but it does affect people who are applying. With that being said, we're accepting both applications. It used to be just one application, and it's a universal one. We're accepting both to coincide and match the waiting list going forward. Um, this is a publishing year for audits, where it's mandatory board member training. I hope you guys all took your Board number training. I did. As we all shake our heads, well, yes, ma'am. Yeah. No, actually, my, um, I have a 
message into tech support. I am stuck on module three. Every time I go, it brings me back to module three. Okay. So I am waiting for them to get back so to So Kathy me. is three-fifths <laughs> certified. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I have till March 31st. Um, speaking of HUD and affecting us and the shutdown, um, as you know, I was unable to research. I've mentioned that at the last meeting, I was unable to recertify Kelly on Elox. However, post shutdown, um, I was able to get back in and recertify. So we have access to the checkbook. And I received that email. <laughs> um, Kathy, you have access to the checkbook. Yeah. In just the resident commissioner. Okay. Okay. You spoke All right. About that. Mm -hmm. Then I guess we're up to the state reports, the vacancies. Uh, nothing on the state, Kelly. That's unbelievable. Nothing until next month. Lucky. Give you a breather. All right. And federal, um, two vacancies due to the flood. Yes. So probably right now, before we jump into um, new business, well, the Section 8. Why don't we take Section 8, then I'll speak to the flood a little bit. Oh, uh, Kelly. Still struggling. Um, I have really people wonderful. out there. I know, I'm just teasing her. I always tease her. <laughs> I always tease her about that. Really because for the last nine years, it was always 170% occupied or whatever. 173, so. yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, so I will take a minute, Kelly. We, you and I had talked about it before we go on to the report and new business. Um, certainly everyone in this board knows, but through a variety and a series of one-on-one -on -one calls. So in the spirit of open meeting and to inform uh, the general public, we had a flood in the tower about a month ago now, three, four weeks ago. Kelly called me. I called the commissioners. I said the most important thing we could do was ensure the safety of our tenants. We said we would relocate tenants that needed to be relocated. Um, I believe you told me that there were eight such families, of which four were going to their own family and four needed relocating. I'm remembering. I'll let you speak to it. Um, bottom line is, since then, um, at the time, HUD was shut down, so I said we were just going to act as a board, unilaterally ensure the safety of our um, members, which is our, of course, number one charter. That all occurred. Since then, there's been um, flood control to come in and estimates and things like that. So. I don't know if we're there right there on the agenda, but it seemed like a logical point to jump in. I don't know if you want to educate the board on beyond my broad strokes. On January 21st, there was a sprinkler head that let go at one, in one of the tower's apartments. With that being said, there was 20 tenants that were affected, either minor or major. We did the standard protocol, Gary did the standard protocol, and he worked with New England Services who came in and did the fans um, and dehumidifiers. We started contacting families who asked them if they would take their family member for the night, if they could, if not we got those families in a hotel. With that being said, um, HUD was shut down. I could not contact them. Um, from there, came back that, that was on a... What happened on Monday night? Monday. Monday, I was gonna say, yeah. Tuesday, contacted the insurance company. The adjuster came out on that Thursday. From there, we started relocating people. We did have two vacancies due to either a death or somebody moving out that we shift people around because we had to. Um, the adjuster came, the insurance company, <coughs> excuse me, the insurance company was contacted. They're just coming back with their estimates now. Um, we're meeting with them tomorrow and hopefully starting the process next Monday. How many people are we um, housing in hotels or motels? None, right? None. None. They're all back. We shifted people around. Um, we did have a death in one of the handicap units. So we moved somebody who was going to be a transfer in the future. We moved her all the way down. 
um, we brought somebody back from the hotel and moved his stuff down into another apartment. So no one's in hotels. The one that where the sprinkler head did break, they are still with their family. Right. Um, okay. That's the most damaged unit. Okay. So Gary, we're under control. We are under control. Um, um, hopefully tomorrow everything is finalized and the GC can get get his side of the things being put back together. Okay. And so you've chosen the GC and and, and you're moving yep. forward. Yep. So with that, um, I did. <coughs> excuse me. I did contact um, HUD asking for a non-competitive um, procurement since it is an emergency. Um, I'm sorry. So with when we have federal estate funds and we want to do something, we always have to go out for a procurement. Since this was an emergency and I did have displaced tenants, I did contact HUD on February 1st and got permission for um, that I don't have to go out for non-competitive and HUD did approve. Would you, did you have to get um, more than one evaluation or, or mm. estimate? Nope. No? Just as Interesting. Because it's an emergency. Emergency just to get things rolling. And who is the GC? How did we choose him or her? He was given to us his contact through our cap. Okay. okay. That uh, same Gary. same guy that we've been dealing with. Right. All right. All right. Um, so they reached out to him. And so he's acceptable to the state, so we're not going to run into that. Very good. Yes, okay. he just did other housing authorities within the last few months. And we were dealing with him on, a, on another one of our units, as a yes. matter of fact. Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. I know that was a concern you had, but I said it was all on flight. So. Um, this is, like I said, kind of a new business item, but other questions for Kelly and or Gary on this particular issue before we uh, continue on with the standard agenda? Did... Um, uh, our insurance company uh, is that dealing are they dealing also with the contents of the uh, apartments or is that something that the tenants have to deal with themselves so they are not they are not dealing with the contents that is why it is so important to have apartment insurance. That's the reason my, for my question, because I've always advocated for that. And, yes. And um, out of the 20 apartments, not one person had an apartment oh insurance. And we're going from rugs to bureaus to one apartment, everything. Um, please, please, if you have car insurance, contact... Your agent. Apartment. apartment insurance is pretty reasonable. It's very, in yes. fact, it's very yes. cheap actually. Yes. So, yes. 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 so I mean, my follow-up to that is: Are we able to, or can we apply for any help for these people, or is there anywhere we can um, seek any kind of funding to help these people? I can reach out to HUD again, but there would be no funding. It would probably be as a board, and it could possibly come from antenna money. It is the tower. Jeez. Boy, that's tough. That's, that's it a, is tough because the antenna money is supposed to benefit everyone. Right? Yeah, I was Not just going to say I'd be very resi uh, resistant to that idea for the inequity of the idea. Now, in this case, everyone didn't have insurance, but the argument is what about the people that weren't affected that didn't have insurance as well? So, Can I suggest that you reach out to Congressman McGovern's office to um, ask him whether they have any um, programs or mechanisms to deal with this type of a loss? Because I'm sure this isn't the first time this has happened. And... I'm sure the congressman probably may have some insight into something like this. So that's my suggestion. I don't have any other questions, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Not even. Yep. Okay. Um, we jumped out of the agenda a little bit. I think we um, 
we're right before the social workers report, which then leads to um, bullet in a new business. So I would imagine that she's been involved in uh, some of this um, in inter. Um, facility relationships, and I don't see anything on her report about that. Gary and myself have been meeting with tenants one-on-one -on -one personally. I did have a meeting with um, the 20 tenants, but I, it's been one-on-one, -on -one, just helping them, seeing what they need and everything. So Shirley hasn't been involved in that at all? No, it's just been myself and Gary. Okay. Okay. Um, Kelly, the next item on the agenda you had was specifically regarding the resident commissioner, which I feel like we discussed in the narrow correspondence, but do you want to put a finer edge on it than that as it pertains to Bruce and the current resident? I believe Richard asked the last board meeting for clarification regarding the resident commissioner. So back in May of 2016, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority did receive a finding um, because we didn't have a resident on the board. We sent out notices to everybody in the towers and they voted. And we have been doing that yearly. Um, and it will be coming up again in April. I'll be sending a notice out to all the residents to see if they would like to run for commission. But only within the towers? not Just within the towers. Um, the well, because it's what? Federal. Federal. Yeah, but, but it's a federal requirement. But, but can't we? We were arguably ahead of the curve once on this. Should we be ahead of the curve a second time and make it enterprise wide? I I don't have any problem uh, with asking our executive director to ask our representative at HUD if we can open it up to all of our residents. Unless it seems to be headed that. in that direction. <laughs> oh, you have? Okay, that's fine. It okay. just seems to be headed in that direction based on the conversation of 10 minutes ago. But go ahead. Go ahead. It just is federal okay. right now. Until that the bill passes, okay. once the bill passes, then it could be state. Okay. <clears throat> Kelly's right on top of it then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, I think that covers that. Wow. Wow. Um, and now we're on to the uh, the letter dated May 12th, I believe, Kelly, if I'm going in order. I oh, know that covers the same issue, right? That's all part of the same issue? Yes. All right. So then we are on to um, Campanello spelt without an E, if anybody's curious. Um, uh, we are on to the... Um, I always love seeing the state letterhead because you can see Karen Polito's name at the top. Um, the December 18 about our um, formula funding. So maybe you want to speak to that. Um, for formula funding for fiscal year 2022, um, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority is awarded $199,229.44. That means every time I call to ask, this is only for state, um, what you guys would like to see regarding capital funds, this is how this money is used. Mm -hmm. And that means improvements. Correct. Big projects. Mm -hmm. These are the big projects that we do, like the um, parking lot is always the one that comes to mind. Kelly, what did we get last year? Do you remember? Was it about the same? I don't remember. Feels like it was about two hundred grand to me. It, sounds, it, it, sounds it feels right. like it was about the yeah, same. So that's, right. if my memory is accurate, then that's um. So this is just a fund good. that is divvied up amongst the two hundred and thirty-two <coughs> local housing authorities, and and that's our share, right. is is what it boils down to. Okay. And it's only to be used for capital improvements. Yes. And you've got your ongoing list of capital improvements, and that doesn't change, and Those that's been... Those are all the fish projects. Right, right, oh, correct. All right, so this is just the funding for said projects. All right, um, Housing Justice Network Advocate. This was just an overview of the government shutdown and additional resources that we could use. One thing I did note, note is, in the event of the shutdown, that um, if it lasts into March, PHAs were instructed to use the reserves as 
was asked at the last board meeting if um, mm. I was supposed to ask the accountant if we could go use the reserves in the bank. And this is saying that we can. Um, also that the public housing authorities are not federal agencies and will therefore remain open. Well, we knew that. <laughs> I think you came to work every day. I don't think there was any question <laughs> yeah. about that. Okay. Plus in the middle of the night. One of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. They send long letters, don't they? Yeah. So then it's your high performer, Kelly. Yes. Congratulations. Um, our BAS, which is Public Housing Assessment System, um, we're a high performer notification as of 331. And that means it's the Physical Financial Management Capital Fund. We scored high. My fellow board members, if you look at some of these scores, they're unbelievably impressive. 38 out of 40, 25 out of 25, 10 out of 10. I mean, some of them, for a, a blended average, I'm not reading every category, a blended average of 93 out of 100. That's excellent. Great job. Great job, Kelly. Really excellent. And then the last piece of new business, which is um, you have prolific documentation, and we already jumped ahead of it, was the, um, the sprinkle ahead. I think we probably covered that slightly out of order, but I felt like it was the elephant in the room when we covered it. Um, I flipped through this. I know there's just reams and reams of pages of write-ups of specific costs and um, uh, specific building line item details of work and all the units. I don't know that it does a sport any good to attack that line by line, but I'll certainly defer to my colleagues on how they want to address specific questions to Kelly and or Gary, who obviously came here for this specific um, reason. It's basically the adjuster's report. Yeah. And I'm sure, Gary, I shouldn't say I'm sure, I would assume, like in any adjuster's report, there'll be supplemental and supplemental, and this doesn't begin to scratch the surface. You this, pull back the this walls. This is the beginning. Is the yeah, beginning. exactly. Yes. I mean, that's kind of common sense, but I'll state it for the audience yeah. and for the camera. The right. GC and the, and the adjuster are meeting again tomorrow right. morning. Right, and there'll be a dozen more of those meetings, I'm exactly. sure. Exactly. Right. Right. I mean, it's just hundreds. It's literally 100 pages of, yep. of line items. Yep. No, I'm satisfied that you're proceeding as, in, in a proper and, and appropriate manner, so... I'm, um, as far as my own concerns, I mean, you've addressed them, so um, I'm sorry, again, that uh, we had uh, residents that, again, did not have insurance. Um, it is so important because of the, because of the nature of a housing authority. We, we do not carry insurance to cover your contents, so um, this is very, very important, and it's a, it, it's a pretty minor cost. Um, in order to obtain that type of insurance. So again, just to just to you know double my emphasis, I, I really I really think, and I hope that you folks here will consider getting um, ten resident insurance, tenant insurance renters policies, insurance. renters okay. insurance policies, whatever you want to call it, um, because this is a this is just one more example of where um, losses are not covered because of the lack of that insurance. So. Question. I have a big mouth. You soft voice, big mouth. My question is on people coming from single family homes or their fam you know, uh, a tenement and they're going into these apartments here, are they really aware that we don't cover the cost of any loss that they have, that they do need um, insurance? Is there something in a package that goes out to them? In the resident handbook. Okay. It expresses. Please get apartment insurance. And it's also a, a item that's noted in your lease. So, which we hope you read. Yeah. But, but in, t in terms of people who might not read it, if that could be emphasized when they're signing on the dotted line to come into the housing authority, 
Jennifer and also Shirley sit down and just go through the handbook. Okay. And yeah, I, you know, I, I think that um, you might consider if we if we can have a, a slight revision to the handbook, there might be areas where you want the potential resident to initial that, you know, that has been spoken about. That's a good idea. Um, or be, because I, I notice whenever I rent a car, um, that <laughs> if I don't get the extra insurances, they make me initial about right. six different places. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Kelly... A, a thought that occurs to me, and this might be slightly outside of um, our scope, but it might be worth you making a phone call, and I can give you a couple of names. I wonder if there would be the ability for you to engage with a local, a town-based, like Mancusa, Nowak, or Tony Town, one of these local insurance agents where you could say, we, the Sh Shrewsbury Housing Authority, want to see about setting up the ability for tenants to get individual policies and so that you already know the names, the parameters, the locations, and all of that. And if a tenant calls you, it's one incremental policy, you're not starting from scratch. Kind of like a master or something? I've sent out an email, a general email, okay. asking for insurance companies just to come to the towers to speak. Okay. And I've sent out, it was... Yeah, I mean, we can't play favorites, but we could right. make a couple of recommendations of, again, I always say local because I'm always about local, uh, two or three, I just don't, I just named the ones that are right on Route 9, two or three that are local and would be responsive to us and things like that. So, well, okay. there's one that is in the uh, Shrewsbury Credit Union building, and that, oh, yeah, that particular, that Daniels, yeah, 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 and okay. that particular in, in agent um, in the past has offered discounts to Shrewsbury employees. Um, for, for different types of insurances. So um, you may want to reach out to them and see whether or not they would offer that type of incentive to our residents. Right. Daniels? Daniels Insurance. They're located in the uh, in the credit union building. Yeah. And they, they also have an office in the center. Okay. So I know that that was available to Shrewsbury um, employees at some stage. Okay. Maybe still is. Now, I believe this just goes on and on, yeah, with the, uh, with the report. It That's really it. does. It's about 115 pages. I'm not exaggerating. Um, that having been said, is there any other new business, any um, other questions before I turn it to the audience? Well, since we have Gary here, is there anything you think that we need to know other than what we've asked you about? On the flood detail, no. In general? No. That is, um, the only thing we haven't done yet is remove all the kitchen cabinets that need to be removed. That's in that one unit or, or in no, several? No, Seven, seven or eight of them, I think, nine that need remodels. Wow. Um, so it's just a matter of when they remove those cabinets, what else are they going to find back there? All right. Yeah. Anything, yeah. El anything else in general about the, uh, uh, man the management of the uh, uh, maintenance? No. Good shape? Yep. Everything's running good. How about the snow, and shoveling in the winter, and all that? No, it's always fun. You lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has, hasn't been bad so far, but hasn't been a bad winter. It really, hasn't yeah. been a bad winter. But you know, uh, March could come in like a lion. <laughs> We're ready. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, if, just Ms. getting Ms. back to uh, uh, Mr. Ricker's question about the cabinets. Did they agree to do uppers and lowers? Yes. Okay. Good matching. job on that. Yeah. Excellent. That was they had some pushback yes. on that initially. Yeah. They were only yeah. going to do. Yeah, they want to match them. Yeah. Good. So. Thank you. Good. Any other questions to my left or right? Since we're here and we don't get here very often, questions okay. for... But we are now coming every quarter. <laughs> yeah. I whispered in my ear. Um, <laughs> Ms. McSweeney had the great idea, and I don't want to minimize yeah. it in one yeah. bit at all. To, we, we used to come out once a year, and she said, why can't we rotate? And we all looked at each other and said... Yes, why can't we rotate? And so um, you can thank Kathy, if I can call her by her first name. For the, and he's saying this just so the people at the towers get mad at me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Next month I'll say it to the yeah. other, yeah. Um, I can but, be used as a bad example, too. <laughs> no, it, it was a really, it was, in reality, it was a very good idea. It's why we, um, you know, we're, we're happy to be here, and it was a great idea, and I'm happy to give her credit for it. Um, and more importantly, I'm happy to take questions from you folks. We're on your dime right now. And if anyone needs a mic, we'll walk it back, or maybe Gary could or something. Yes, ma'am. Kind of I just have a statement. I want to compliment your uh, maintenance staff. Yes. Thank you. Great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just general kindness.
kindness and very, very pleasant. We love Gary. Yeah. Yes. But I don't know the staff yeah. personally as well as all the others as I do Gary, but we love Gary. So. He has a great experience. He does. Right. Thank you. Thank that's, you very that's, much. That's good to hear. It's great to hear. Thank good you. Hear. Other it, questions? Miss? the uh, insurance, is there any way that you can mandate new tenants to, as part of their cost of moving in, that they prove that? they... I don't think I can answer can. that. That's private, right? No, no it's, this is your home. We can, yeah. Yeah. No, it, I mean, this is your this is your home. Well, this I mean, is... I'm just thinking, like power insurance, you can't be on the road without insurance. Right. Yeah, but that's a state law. Yeah, this is we we can't legislate our tenants' rights. That's As a matter of fact, our leases are mandated. Uh, the format of our leases are mandated by the state and the federal government. So, um, in fact, they would never allow us to mandate that you buy insurance. It's only a good idea. And, and a prudent idea. So, um, and if I could add on to that, um, for you example, yeah. excuse me, it's, it's your it's your uh, mortgage company that requires that you have homeowners insurance. Yeah. Once you own oh, your home outright, exactly. <laughs> I've been selling real estate for twenty years. But once you own your home outright, you don't have to do that anymore. So even there's some people who own their you know own single family home and don't have insurance. So, right. other questions. Anything back there? No? Okay. Of course. <laughs> I'd like to comment on um, since last year and now, how many windows have been done? It's fabulous. I'll repeat it. She just wanted to say, uh, I'll put words in your mouth slightly, how happy she was and what a good job since last year to now, how many of the new replacement windows has been done? Is that a fair yeah. paraphrase? Okay. But mostly all of them, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. Now, where's the next step? Would it be in the hall or would it be here? Because we do have bad windows in the hall. That's a Kelly question, I think. Yes. So for here, yes. this would be a capital improvement. Okay. Um, back when you got the windows yes. in the previous executive director, yes. he put in it for a capital fund to get all the windows put in. So when I come to meet with you guys mm -hmm. in another couple of months, um, as residents, you can vote for the windows to be in here. Um, I do have good news that there will be mini splits for heating and air conditioning. Does everyone know what a mini split is? No. I didn't think so. I saw the cloud going so when you said it's the new type of air conditioning unit that is ductless. There's a split, it's called a split because half is outside, half is inside. You see the little panels on the wall. That's it. I can't tell you when, but that is the pipeline. As you know, we've been asking for air conditioning and heating systems in this in this room oh. for years. Especially now that Kathy's got us coming here in the summertime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before June. Yeah, yeah. Before we come back. Yeah. But getting back, would it go to that halls? Because the, the hall same, windows are really is, broke. It's the know, same so process. It would be capital. Yeah. It would be capital. Yeah. Funds. That yes. wasn't part of the original. You mean the windows in the hallways? Yeah. Yes. So there's three windows per hallway. They weren't involved in our no. request? Uh, no. Because we heat the halls. And some of those windows, um, that they just go right in and they just go right through. Yes. Yeah. What a shame. I know because we'll save on the heat. Mm. So, Kelly, could that be a, a separate cap? So, the capital improvement was for the actual residences, I'm guessing. It predated the apartments. The, the, right, the yes, anything that adds value. So, <coughs> going forward, we can put that in. For right, could that be a separate project? That's what I'm saying. Yes. Okay, great. Combined. All right, yes. great. But that would be a year or two down the road. Yeah. Uh, uh, it could be. It, it depends on how we want to move, move a few projects. Yeah. Less important projects. I mean, I think energy savings from uh, you know the the hallways if they're losing the heat. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's kind of a pretty yeah, it's a important issue. I agree. I'd, I'd encourage you to move it forward as fast as you can. So when you do your list, you bring that to us for final um, a sign off. The correct? capital improvement. Yeah. Yes. We, yes. All right. So we'll, we'll see that, and we can rework it, and maybe take Mr. Ricker's advice and see about pushing that a little further up. I, I'm inclined to agree. If anyone else, if everyone else. And that's a, another good reason why um, Kathy's idea that we come here on a quarterly basis <laughs> is a good thing, because uh, sometimes we don't hear from you, and we don't hear about problems that you feel 
um, may involve um, repairs or capital improvements and, and things of that nature. So, I mean, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important uh, that, that we come here more often, and I applaud Kathy for coming up with the... And the, he doesn't want to get in trouble at the towers either. <laughs> as I said, I, if nothing else, I can be used as a Go bad ahead, example. Go ahead, Gail. <laughs> but thank you for having us, too. Uh, thank you. Any? Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Picking up the problem with the dumpsters. Okay. The fellow that does the dumpster, and I gave four pictures to Kelly today. Okay. He emptied it last Monday. Okay. And I went over, and it was a quarter still full with debris. Is there, was it frozen? Yes. And then uh, today I went over, after he did it, the same damn packages were there and boxes. So People here are not crushing their boxes. Or, cover, uh, or closing the dumpster. The lids that let water in anyway. Mm. Yeah, so. Or not. Sometimes you can't open them. It is them. so yeah. full they freeze. on Fridays, you can't put anything in there. So the minute he dumps it on Monday morning, we're all rushing over there to get rid of the weekend trash. Yeah. The only thing I can say, and I'll let Kelly, that's a very much an operational issue, and I'll let her take it up with the dumpster company. I will say, in I their defense, as someone that owns dumpsters or rents them, in the winter, the frozen bottom is always going to be an issue. So when you say it's the same damn boxes in the bottom third and all that, that's often because, as Gary said, water gets in the dumpster, it freezes, no matter how it gets emptied. But a good company would clean up after them. No. Before, sure. I it's, I mean, th that's a gray line. That's a gray area. Take the dumpster full of all trash, go to where they dump it, and clean it and come back with it. That was a while ago, but they did do that. What company, I don't know. Somebody that was living here 25 years told me that. Okay. So well, we'll have Kelly look into it, but I, I understand the operational issue there. It's, it's not super manageable, but I appreciate the feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, can I go back to the hall windows for one second? Sure. Um, if this is under capital improvement, we know that the capital improvement funds have been pulled for um, other things, like I think it was the roof down at Elizabeth Gardens and all that. Would they consider this mo important enough to leave it at the top of the list, or how, how does that work? I think Kelly creates the, the list and we submit it. It's not mm -hmm. them, it's actually us, and it's actually Kelly creating a list, wow. bringing it to this board to review, and then getting submitted. So she will, that's why I said my last statement was I'd encourage her to take this feedback, see what she can shuffle. Now, I'm not going to be Kelly for a second. I don't know how many other number ones are above this on that list. But, yes, we have the ability to see where it fits and, and manipulate. So. It's a, somewhat of a wish list, but it, right. it yes. also is prioritized if I believe um, there is some great savings uh, yeah. um, involved. If, there, if there's some other reason, such as uh, saving the heat and, and yeah. things like that, I think that... The state and Fed, for that matter, will always be interested in saving money, yeah. So. Does anyone have a handle on what the monthly electric bills are for heat here, particularly in the winter? I know several years ago it, it was quoted that it, it here it stood to be around 12000 a month, <clears throat> but due to the severe winter. Um, yeah. It had gone up to about 16,000. The bills are in aggregate, so it would be very hard to break them down. But yes, we do see them every month. That's the very beginning of the meeting when we approve the billing amounts. But um, the bills that we see also include the. They're in aggregate, that's what I'm saying. The whole place. Right. Yeah. Everything. So it's very hard to say, extremely hard to say, of a. If, we'll use your number. We'll say it's 12,000. Of a $12,000 bill, what percentage of that represents hallways? Because that $12,000 bill. If there's about 100 units here, Kelly, 99, 100? 100. No, Look at that. So that. of the 100 units in versus the halls and all of that. Yeah. That's no, all. I understand that. It's yeah. just in terms of this Francis Gardens. What we know what the bill is here, as I'm saying, but we don't know what the allocation right. would be well, overall. Well, there'd be no way to. Exactly. Right. There's exactly. no way to really break it out. Right. Because you can't, well, you're not metering it. Right. We right. don't meter it separately. Right. Yeah, right. Did, was there a second question at this table? There was. Go ahead. Um, the heaters that are in the hallway, 
you can't touch them. Once they're put on, it gets so hot in there sometimes, it's unbelievable. You can't breathe. I'll let Gary answer that question. Well, in order. So everybody knows that they are electric. Yes. And the electric does get hot. And yeah. They shut off, they cool off. Right. Um, again, I believe that is in one of our fundings. Oh, for, for new baseboard. So now you can see the, si the situation. Um, what's more important, the heaters or the windows and things like that? Right? But they are electric. Uh, I will say electric heat is the most inefficient and most difficult to regulate. So that's just, this place was built in the 70s, right? And that's when electric heat was all the rage. So. The electric bill here was 15260 Who said 12? Look at you, pretty close. Um, so if you wanted to do it, if it's 15,000 and there's 100 units, there's your math. That's pretty easy. Um, but still, it's hard to separate out the hallways. Mario went backwards. Uh, go ahead. Oh, there's two. I'm sorry. You, you know, go ahead. You go first. No, you're up. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. That's fine. On that list that Kelly has, are we going to get the gutters in the spring or summer? Gutters. 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 Yeah, that is on the list. It is on the list. Right. It is on the list. It has not come up to the top of the list. So it goes by allocation of money. And what is most important? I've been hearing you guys say the air conditioning in yes. this community room is what the majority. So I move that to the top. Mm -hmm. But the gutters are... How is it going to be done? They're on the list. We don't know. We haven't gotten a list yet. And as far as the uh, hallways, building floors, you can cook on the doors. They're so hot. Yeah. Mario, did you have a question? Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's the heat. No, I don't know. Especially in this room right here. Yeah. And I, I know I talked to Gary about it. These boxes, they need to have locks on them because I've come in here maybe four or five times during the week. It turned up to 80. That one over there, the dial is gone and it's turned all the way up. It's like 100 degrees in here. It feels I like they it turn right them now. down, but people have access to these boxes to lift them off and do what they want. They should have locks on them. And I think that's the biggest problem. Right now, I turned the heat up to I think 70 because it was cold in here. Right. But that one over there has no dial on it. It should be that, programmable. That's certainly not a capital issue. Where they can't yeah. put yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that can be easily addressed. That's not a capital issue. That can be easily addressed with normal maintenance. You want to take that and open a ticket for it or something, Gary? What's that? Uh, a programmable one or? Yeah, that's really the only way we can go without yeah. registering over. And then lock it. Let's go 72 degrees. And they, so no matter how much you yeah, yeah. push that button, it's not going over So we can fix that. That's something we can fix. one more thing. Of course. Uh, Only one at a time. They've had a bazaar here. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The bazaar. Yeah. And I know we've talked about it, and last year would have been our last year doing it, okay? I approached Kelly, and I went about it and talked to my insurance company about pulling a, a two-day insurance policy. And I, it, it would cost us either 50 to to $100 to have a million-dollar coverage for the two days to run the bazaar here, which I would like to get approval from the board if we could do that. Uh, it's coming out of the association to pay for this. Sure. It's a liability that it ain't going to be towards the housing. It comes on us no. and it's covered. It, Just if, to run it because that's how we raise money here. Sure. No, I understand, Mario. If I'm not mistaken, Kelly, like three to six months ago, didn't we vote in a policy where they said they could have one? They simply needed to fill out a one-page form with you, give you some dates. You would, I don't want to say rubber stamp it, but you would approve <laughs> it, look at it, make sure it's okay? Okay. So, yes, that is... The, the short answer is yes to the request, not yes to the date. Yes to see with Kelly, we've got a form, we, we created a policy whereby you can fill out. It's a very simple one-page form where you pick the date, a rain date, and give Kelly um, the insurance. I think we even talked about that. So, yeah, the answer is a, um, a qualified yes. Work with Kelly and we'll figure out the dates and times. But policy out for that. We created a policy. For two days. But get and together with her yeah. uh, to fill out the form. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Appreciate Our pleasure. Other questions? Uh, so, sure. Back to thermostats. Um, in one of your uh, notices, I believe monthly notices, you indicated that they were all going to be replaced here in the individual units. And I've never turned the heat on in my bedroom. 
in the five years I've lived here. Um, my living room thermostat is set at 55 and it's 74 or 75 or 76 in my living room. And, and, and that can't possibly be an effective use. Are they going to be replaced? Those are, it's a fish project. Yeah. So when... Can we get a bigger fishing pole? <laughs> so... Good question. It, it, so, yeah. How do I break I don't disagree. The question is how do you want to handle it? No, I think we can talk about it privately. Do you think they're broken coffee enough? Okay. okay. I certainly okay. can't look like a bad guy right now. Um, is that it? If that is it, we know you need thermostats. <laughs> I will tell you, it feels like it's a thousand degrees in this room to me right now. It's, it's really hot. This thing's pumping. <laughs> Another twenty minutes and I'll be done. Um, I feel like I have menopause. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if there are no other questions, then I will close it out on our side. We're all good with you. Guys. All right, then, uh, fellow commissioners, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And I want to thank you all for having us here tonight. It's it's always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay. See you again. <laughs>